and welcome back. Today we're working on a transformer based DI box or direct injection box for your mixer, console, or computer interface. I'm going to invite you also to subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell if you're interested in future videos. These are the parts we're working with today. We've got our wiring diagram, very important, a quarter inch jack that's been wired with a ground wire and a shielded input wire. Since my transformer has nine pins, we also have a novel socket, a suitable box, some screws, washers, and nuts, a male XLR connector, and some two conductor shielded wire or standard mic cable. This transformer converts high Z signals from your bass or guitar pickups into a low Z signal that's mic preamp ready. This happens to be a mic input transformer that we're gonna wire backwards, but any high Z to low Z transformer would work. And we'll begin by test fitting our parts. And then I've made a template for the best positioning and easy hole drilling for this box. I'll tape on the template and mark it with a magic marker. Now to drill the other side, I'm gonna use the same template. But since it's a smaller hole, I'm just gonna use a smaller drill bit. When my holes are drilled, I like to use files to clean up any burrs. And now we're gonna wire this socket. So to wire the socket, since this is such a small enclosure, I'm going to put my tube socket on upside down and wire from the top. So looking at our diagram, pins 1, 2, and 6 are grounded. So instead of using wire for each pin, I'm going to use one single jumper wire to go from pin 2, 1, to 6. To get this to fit, I'm going to make a little J shape. Now that I've got those loosely fitted in there, I'm going to make a little ground wire that's going to attach to my chassis. That's also going to fit into pin 1. Now I'll get a good solder joint on these. Connections are tight and shiny. I'll trim off any excess. Now I'm going to wire in the XLR wire. That includes a shield and two outputs. So you'll notice the shield wire slips right into the tube socket connector. That's actually a trick that I learned from working on vintage tape gear, which I'll share with you a little later. Solder up my shield, trim off the excess, connect my hot and cold outputs. To pins eight and five, solder those in. And check all my connections to make sure they're nice and tight. I'll uninstall the tube socket and then reinstall it permanently. Now I'll solder in that ground wire to the existing RCA connector. Since I don't have any strain relief on this cable, I'm going to make a strain relief out of some heat shrink tubing, which I put on before I 
sort of the cable through the box. Now I'll heat that and this will ensure the cable won't pull out over repeated uses. My joints are nice and tight. And now it's time to install the quarter inch input jack. I use some vinyl tape to make sure that nothing grounds out on the chassis. And I'm going to install the ground wire to pin six. Solder that in. and my input wire to pin nine. And those are all the internal connections. I double check my diagram and I'll wire up the XLR. I won't bore you with how to wire up an XLR, but I will show you that trick that I was telling you about. So as normal, separate your shield from your conductors, but I like to separate them into two groups. The first group is going to be the diameter of whatever connector you're soldering to. And the second group is going to get wrapped around the first to make a good mechanical connection. We'll solder that joint to make sure it gets a good electrical connection. Now you have a shield conductor that's not too unwieldy and is easy to solder into most XLR cups. We'll install our transformer. Don't forget to label your input and output. And if you have any rubber feet, now's the time to put them on. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.